Yeah, it's a pleasure to bring to the stage a gentleman who comes here every month and tells us what's going on right here in the East Valley. Uh, please welcome the managing editor from the East Valley Tribune, Mr. Brett Farah. Brett, come on out. Extra, extra Sir. Welcome. So welcome. Good to have you here. What's, for what's me going again. on since uh, since last month? You know, it's uh, there's actually been quite a bit going on. You know, the first thing, it's not so much a, a happy thing, but it is something to to kind of celebrate. Um, uh, gentleman, Mr. Ross Farnsworth, who um, a lot of people in this room probably know, and uh, the general citizens may not necessarily know, but probably should because of how he's affected their lives. Um, he, uh, he died earlier this month at the age of 81, one of the pioneers of Mesa um, from both a business and cultural standpoint. And a uh, little trivia that we, we learned when, when he was born in Mesa in, uh, I got 1931 here, the population was 5,000. So think about that and living in this city and watching it grow 100 times larger. I mean, what he's been able to, to see and experience. And, the, the pertinence to this room, obviously, he was a Mesa Chamber board member. He was a city council member, was on the community college district board, um, owned plenty of businesses in the area and development and everything. So um, sad in that, in that respect, but, uh, but an incredible leader that uh, we all need to kind of remember. And Mr. Farnsworth right there? Yeah, yeah that, that boy, is him. I'm not even a Mesa resident, but boy, you hear Farnsworth Ranch. Absolutely. And he did a lot of development. So. Kind of neat, this past weekend, you know, to kick off the month, there was the uh, Phoenix Marathon, which called Phoenix, but was in Mesa. It really started in Mesa, and Farnsworth Companies was one of the big sponsors, and that was the, turns out that was the same day that he passed. And, uh, but um, it's uh, just seeing the growth of the city in the last decade, let alone the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and uh, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big loss, but at the same time, somebody that uh, put a benchmark of how to grow this place moving forward even further. That's great. Um, what else is going on? Earlier this week, um, you know, we're obviously in the middle of spring training. I've talked about that a lot the last few months, but it's it's a big deal ar around here. But earlier this week, it was finalized the final the final you know dotted uh, T and crossed I, I guess you could say, um, for the uh, Oakland A's to come to Mesa in 2015. So, a uh, little trivia: there are a 20-year agreement. Um, the city is gonna gonna help um, with some renovations to to Hoakum Stadium. Uh, Little little trivia, the A's were actually the first team to play at the old Hoakum Stadium. Everybody associates the Cubs with Mesa, and they should be. Cubs have been here off and on for, you know, half a century. But um, but the A's were here for quite a while. When they, and in, when they were in their heyday, when they were the marquee franchise in baseball, more than the Yankees, when they had Reggie Jackson and won three World Series in a row in the 70s, they were training here in Mesa at Rendezvous Park. And so to bring them back home is kind of a big deal. And uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, Take a guess, how many cities? There are a lot of stadiums that have more than one team that play in them. You know, we got the Diamondbacks and the Rockies up in Scottsdale and a lot on the west side and some in Florida. How many cities of all Major League Baseball spring training, so Florida and Arizona, have two stadiums, if you had to guess? Um, two. It, there's two here and there's one in Florida, and the that's, two here right, right now is Phoenix, and that one will change when the A's move to Mesa. So Mesa will be one of only three cities with Scottsdale and Fort Myers, Florida, that have two spring training stadiums that are actively used wow, at the same time. Awesome. So, I mean, pretty incredible um, company considering how big, you know, professional baseball is around the country. Well, so. Oakland was, uh, you know, that was... That was the subject of Moneyball. So this is uh, Mesa's version of Moneyball, getting them here. So. Yeah, to, to a degree. You know, there's... there's Obviously, that both sides of the equation, you know, should city money be put in, things like that. But at the same time, the, the economic impact that it's going to have is, especially with the Cubs moving over to Riverview. I mean, that obviously next year is the big selling point. But then in 2015, with this happening, uh, it's, it can't be looked at, in my opinion, as anything but a, but a boon for the area. So That's great. Have you been to the spring training games? Anybody? Great. Awesome. What else is going on? You know, we've, uh, we've got some news here with the chamber. Um, the chamber has uh, announced its, uh, its new chairman of the board and, uh, and some new board members. And I think the mix is actually kind of interesting. And I say this just kind of looking on paper, but um, James Christensen, first of all, of Gateway Bank, he was here a couple months ago to, uh, to speak to the, to the group here. And um, a very interesting guy. And he, um, he's the new chairman of the board for this year. And... Um, <laughs> And the five, the five new uh, board members, uh, Garland Bourgeois, uh, Rob Gould, Craig Lohman, Kevin Thompson, and Joe Wilson. And uh, uh, Garland's from Eastmark, um, the development, obviously, the massive development. I keep saying big, and then I start, have to stop myself and say, no, massive. It's, it's incredibly huge. 
Um, Rob Gold from uh, Banner Desert Medical Center, uh, Craig Lohman from, uh, he's a CPA and partner with the Lohman Company, Kevin Thompson with Southwest Gas, and Joe Wilson with Benedictine University. And what's most interesting about that to me is here you have five new board members, and look at the five different dynamics of their backgrounds. Utilities, finance and accounting, medical, real estate, education. I mean, that's what we keep talking about in this region, in this area. So uh, definitely a great, uh, great addition to the chamber and to the leadership here in, in Mesa as a whole. That's great. And uh, on top of that, uh, a little side note, you know, I know we, we all have, haven't really thought of it as anything but official, but um, this week the, the chamber announced officially that, uh, that Sally Harrison is the, uh, ch is the president and CEO of the chamber. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's something, like I said, that we've, we've all been aware of for a while, but uh, it's that official, official stamp now is, uh, is a great thing moving forward. That's exciting. Forward, so. don't, don't move or anything. Don't hurt yourself over there. <laughs> That's Sally in her walking boot. Good to have you back without crutches. And congratulations. That's great, Brett. Anything so, else uh, we ought to know about? Well, we talked about Eastmark and you know that alone. We're doing. We have a Tribune, not shameless plug, but we've got a. We're starting a couple of real estate sections coming out, and that that alone, just the fact that we're seeing the interest in that from builders and real estate agents and everything that's kind of ramping back up. And I don't think we're getting back to the 2005, 2006, uh, you know, early 2007 levels. But um, but to see the the changes in the development alone, you know, Eastmark, um, uh, there was a. a ton of land at Morrison Ranch purchased back in Mesa by a handful of developers. I think there's seven or eight that are going into Eastmark. So it's, a, it's an incredible time over the next you know, six to eight months as all these kind of get started to see what we're, uh, we're going to be able to experience and, uh, and uh, have right in our backyards. You know, Mesa is the, I think, 36th, 38th largest city in the country and has a ton of development still coming. So growth is definitely on the horizon again. So That's great. Got time for a quick question. If anybody's got anything you'd like to ask Brett? Otherwise, we'll turn you loose. I couldn't have answered them all. You're, you're that thorough, Brett. Yeah. You've covered it. And what we don't get from you, we know where to find you online. You do. And by the way, um, I like that Brett's checking his Facebook account the whole time he's here. That's amazing. I'm che checking in, and <laughs> Sally and Sean are putting up pictures of me. And I'm no, we appreciate you coming by. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Brett. Thank Big you. round of applause. Mr. Brett Farah.